Welcome back. We're in the middle of March Madness, and we're now joined by a man who is a two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year, there and his is. teams have made the NCAA tournament 14 times Ooh. in 21 seasons. Mm -hmm. A son of the Natty, a fellow son of the Natty, UCLA head coach Mick Cronin. Welcome to speak. Yes, sir. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Thanks, for sure, man. Thanks for joining us. So, um, who do you have winning your bracket? Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have many rules in the NCAA anymore. Yeah. But I can't have a bracket. Is that oh, right? Mm. Can't have a bracket. Okay. Yeah. So that, went, that went bad pick? for a former UCLA football coach yeah. one time. Uh, Rick Inger was Rick uh, Newhouse so I But I, I mean, look, UConn's a prohibitive favorite yeah. in my in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But then you know, neutral site, like these guys in the NFL, it's no home, you know, no home field in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You're right, right. Everything's right. neutral site, and you know, one shot, uh, you know, one injury. So it, it, look, they're favorite, but anything can happen. So uh, I hope this isn't violating the no bracket <laughs> rule, but. Um, who do you have seeing them in the, the championship game? I think it, it, it could be anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, look, Purdue would be the obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but that was my bracket. You're right. right. <laughs> but 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 you know, it, this tournament's had a lot of favorites. Yeah, a lot, lot of favorites in the Sweet 16, which you know, um, people say they love Cinderella. I, I know the networks don't. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You should hear them. They don't. They don't. Yeah. You should hear them. They, yeah. don't, they, they don't, so, so, but I think it's going to lend to some great games this weekend. Yeah. You right. know, there was some mismatches yesterday. Yeah. Yes, about, it about was. Yeah. Be. You could just see watching hey. it. And I know you say you're a basketball guy. I, and I want some money. I want some money. <laughs> there you go. I want to ask you this, though, Mick. So, like, uh, I'm a big believer in, in talent always wins, yeah. right? But as I got older in the NFL, that's not really true, right? We see that with Aaron Rodgers and John Brady. Anyway, my thing is a guy like Zach Eady, who is experienced, he's older, right? And he's having all the success in the world. Yeah. That's what we're talking about Purdue. But my question to you is more of like a team like Kentucky, who always gets all the top talent, but can't seem to, to win. And I was wondering, is it a really a, a thing of, hey, you need some young talent, but you probably need some more yeah. veteran leadership and experience? I'd say just what you've learned as you guys got older playing, right? The value of knowing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and and you, you look, you look at the truth of it now is... Do guys stay that long? Right. And then, you know, as you, you've covered the NBA for a long time, there's a difference between being a talented NBA prospect right. mm. and a great college player. Mm. Big right. difference. Right. Yes, so is, is it a mix? It's the same thing in football. College football yeah. but, it's but it's the same yeah. thing because you say three years. Mm -hmm. But in our sport, you can be this super talented guy that everybody's talking about on all these shows all year. You see Zion, right. you see Zion. Yeah. But the most valuable player is a guy like a Zach Eady. Yes, yes. Okay, UConn's backcourt. Yes. In their fifth year, Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer. Last year for me, Tiger Campbell, Jaime mm, Hawkins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th there's other guys that are better pro prospects, right. maybe, but they're not, they're not the best college player. Mm. And there's a big, you know, there's so many young and old guys in our sport versus, you know, like I said, it's progression in the, in the football right. you know, world. But so, I, how, so, wait, real quick, uh, a second part to that. I just want to ask, so... Is it a, when you're recruiting, right? Are, are you recruiting? Like, we do want to want them five stars, them top guys that can leave and want it done. And is there a mixture of where we want to get some guys that we can develop that can become solid college? How does that, that mixture, how do you do that when you recruit? Look, I've never, uh, obviously, my last five years have been at UCLA. Before that, uh, I, was, I had to develop everybody. Oh, okay. You know, I was, you know, and everybody I work for, developmental coaches, are the best Bob Huggins, Rick Patino. But, some good ones, yeah, um, for sure. You know, look, we won big at UCLA, and we had some one-and-done guys, mm -hmm. but we won big because our veterans. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, our, our veterans got us to a Final Four, two straight sweet, sweet 16s. You know, our best players were veterans. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and now you can get veterans in the transfer portal. Yeah. The world has totally oh, changed. That's that's so, you know, that, that's where the, it's, a whole, it's a whole other topic we mm -hmm. may hit. Speaking of talent, some young talent, you got a chance to... See Bronny James. Oh, yeah. Bronny James play. He played against him. What would be your advice to him? Would you, as a young player, him being a freshman, would you advise him to come out or would you advise him to stay and kind of develop and play a couple more years of college basketball mm -hmm. or at least one more year of college basketball? Well, I would tell any young player um, that in his situation, that he's got to improve, right? I mean, he didn't play well enough this year to, to show he was ready. Now, you can say, well, he didn't have that much opportunity. Because he was behind Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ooh, nice. Ellis, you know. So and those are great players. Yes, they are. 
And I know Bronny from his time at, at Sierra Canyon. Um, you know, I actually recruited his father. One of the, I think he was the only guy that drove through snowstorms. Huggins used to make me do that to go up to Akron. But um, his situation is just not like anybody else's. You know, so if your father's going to have influence, do you go now? Mm -hmm. to, so you can play with your father. So it's just, it's so different. I can tell you guys, I grew up with Pete Rose Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, so you're you know, a Western Hills guy, right? Exactly. So we're from the west side of Cincinnati. And I just can't tell you, like, I'm so happy that Pete's been able, he's been a minor league baseball guy. He's a lifer. He just loves the game. And he's had a great life. He's got a great family. Um, that the pressure of being Pete Rose Jr. didn't really basically ruin his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you just, Imagine, yeah. it was hard. I mean, I'm telling you, we, you know, it was, it was hard. Like, there was a group of us, we're all, we watched what it w was to be his, you know, the son of the, the great Pete Rose. So I can't, I, I know what Bronny goes through. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it up close as mm -hmm. a kid. So, uh, you know, he's on the, our, our rival, but I root for him. You yeah. know, so it's a, but his situation to make a decision to go pro or that obviously is going to be really more based off of his father's influence and does he want to play with his dad? Uh, with, you know, every other freshman, they don't have that choice. They don't, no, <laughs> the, no. You know, their, their dad's not good, arguably the best player ever. Yeah. I got to ask you something. Um, Kansas coach Bill Self yeah. said. Kansas mm. was a, a fourth seed. They were blown out by a fifth seed of Gonzaga in the second round. And after yeah, the game. I saw this. This was yeah, wild. I seen this. <laughs> coach Bill Self had this to say. I think for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be honest. Not in the moments during the game, but obviously we played. We had eight guys on scholarship. What do you what do you make of him <laughs> thinking Kansas. that way, even though they did get into the tournament? Yeah, first, first of all, it's I will tell you guys this, and you guys had to do it after a loss, when you have to go in front of the media, um, you're not always at your best. It's emotions, yeah. It's yeah, very, no, yeah. I get it. Yes. And because look, you're such a competitor. Sure. You're, you're trying to go in and be calm and congratulate the other team. So that, that's a fight in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you don't know the context. Like, he didn't just sit there and announce it. Mm -hmm. He was asked the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So people don't, but they just take that answer and say, this is what Bill said. But he was answering a question. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you answer the question truthfully, which he obviously did. Yeah. Okay. When they asked him if he had thought about next season, well, I've been thinking about it for a month. Yeah. You know. Or do you take pause? I'm sure he, you know, now that it was used as clickbait, you know, Bill's a friend of mine. He would like to have it back. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he would like that because it makes it look like, well, he, was, he wasn't even thinking about winning. No, 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 no. He's thinking he ain't about believe in his team or. Yeah. All that. Like, look, Bill Self trying to win every game. Watch him on the sideline. You, you know, we all look like yeah. we're one step from a cardiology, you know, <laughs> situation. <laughs> you, you Understood. Know. But, it, you know, he told the truth. Hey, it, he should be thinking of we all are yeah. thinking ahead yeah right. you know hey what's my team i take notes okay this is what we're not good at this is yeah. you know just so i don't forget yeah you know not just on scouting i'm taking notes on you know we're not athletic enough we need more shooting mm. you know don't get emotional when the season's over make sure that that you remember that you got to have these three things well so yeah she's sure you're thinking ahead but it just it, it was didn't come out great. Yeah. You know. Well, see, I, I know, appreciate. I'm gonna use that though. We, yeah, I'm I mean, at my best, man. You know, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Stop, laughs> no, no, I mean, we, we've, we've all, we've all been best, there. But I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate when you guys are honest, and yeah. I believe that it's on us not to take it out of context, not to blow it up. Yeah. Because there is logic in what you're saying, and if any of us look at how we do our jobs, we're not just always thinking about today. Yeah. We're thinking about tomorrow too. And for some reason, we sometimes look at coaches and players through a different lens, yeah. as if they live a different way or have a different way of thinking. And it's and so, I'm I'm with you, and I it it bothers me when something like this ends up making Bill look bad yeah. when it's it's just the reality of the situation. Yeah, right. it gets taken different ways. But look, you know that's where um, you can't coach at our level and not understand you're you're going to you're never going to be perfect that's going to happen you're going to be criticized mm. and he shouldn't even be thinking about it he needs to be thinking about his team and recruiting and like i am i'm in the back texting kids in the portal which we want to ask you about that, that that's the gift and the curse of being a coach being a player you have to deal with all the yeah, things it's reality but, but since we're talking about gift and the curse 
How do you feel about the NIL, Ooh. right? Since this has occurred to the game. So I got a question for you guys. Okay. How do you feel as good as you guys Man, were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is my people say, hey, well, you know, uh, all these guys at UCLA, we have unbelievable alumni, right, in mm -hmm. basketball. You know, they, they 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 should give money. And I was like, well, if I was Reggie Miller, I'd be thinking, well, I didn't get paid. Yeah. Right. Well, at least above well, the table. I was like, <laughs> no, I mean, you know. Open up that. But I, I will say this. I love it for the kids. Oh, yeah. Because, because, right, I was that player when I went to Pittsburgh, right, and, and I was a badass. I had Dave Wallace as my head coach, and I got busy every game, right? And I was only there for two years, right, year and a half or something like that. I left after my sophomore year. And everybody had all my stuff on. Shady this, shady that, you yeah. know, my number on it. I have no money. I had oodles and noodles, yeah, right? And I enjoyed college, but if I'd have had that other stuff, yeah, I would have struggled as much. I might have made different decisions. You know what? I really want to stay one more year, man. I, yeah. We have a really good team coming in. Damn, we might get a super our championship. No, I'm going to stay. You, you wouldn't have stayed. Well, no, no, no but I'm just kidding. What I'm saying is, like, now you're getting money a certain way, you think different. So yeah. what I want to ask you from, from recruiting, because um, Deion Sanders is a really good, close friend of mine, right? Yeah. And he's real vocal about it. Like, he go in there to see kids and talk to them. First thing they say is, yo, what's the money like, coach? Uh -huh. So I want to ask you, from that perspective as a coach, like, yeah. has the NIL, like, changed the game for recruiting for you? Is oh, it, yeah. In totally a good or changed. bad way? Well, I, I think it, it, I don't look at it like that because what happens is if you say the truth, there's, there's good and bad. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I play golf at El Caviero in the Valley with, where Chris Paul plays. Mm. And Chris comes up, you know, Chris like, this is not good. This is Chris talking. Okay. And I said, well, why do you say that? And he's like, well, they're not going to save any of the money. Some of them won't even save the money to pay their taxes. Mm. And oh. they're not going to be hungry, and it's going to affect their development. His whole thing was that if, mm. you know, it takes away hunger, it affects development. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I, I agree with Shady on, on the, like, Lonzo Ball's jersey shouldn't be selling out in the UCLA bookstore, and he doesn't get the money. Um, like, that's ridiculous. Your point. To your point. People's mm. walking around wearing all your stuff. I mean, that went on. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? Arguably the greatest Come on, you, player. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, UCLA owns the rights to all his pictures that when he played at UCLA. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's written 16 books. So he has to pay UCLA. Oh, if they, to wow. Use, to, if he wants to use a picture. I did not know that's that. That's, that's crazy. crazy. From that era. So it, it, everybody's name, image, and likeness is their own. They yeah. should, you, we all should own our own name, image, and likeness. Yeah, right, I agree. So absolutely. Yeah. Now, has it changed it? Uh, totally. But with anything, whether it's the iPhone, what, there's good and bad with everything, right? right? right. I mean, yeah. look, you know, yeah. there's always side effects. Do you really, if a kid starts making in basketball 100000 a year, and he could make, nowadays, I mean, yeah. $50 yeah. Million a year in the NBA? Yeah. Yep. Do you really want it, that 100000 a year taking his hunger away mm. yeah, or giving him money to party when he shouldn't be, you know, he should be right. sleeping. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so, you know, and Chris Paul's point to me in the conversation was, it's just, you know, how he's, his concern was our young people ready to deal with having mm. some money yeah. like that. Right. And, yeah. and, and, I want, and I want to stay on that Great because I've, I've talked to a lot of coaches in the college football world that I played for, and they said, basically, these kids are soft. NIL really has made these kids soft because... Like entitled? If, yeah, but, like, if coach is yelling at me now, you know what, man, I'm a transfer, I'm going to go here. Mm -hmm. So is it harder from that standpoint, too, really, like, coaching these kids and being able to push these kids? Because, to be honest with you, this generation is really get, <laughs> getting soft and, you know what I mean, and, and sensitive if you're, if you're coaching them hard. Mm. Yeah, I, look, I, I think... I'm just not, I'm not making a, a tough spot. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. It's not, it, it, I don't care, so it's all good. Yeah. You know, I'm going to coach the way I coach. Like, yeah. I, I'm not changing. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. I don't think that kids have changed. I don't think this generation's any different than when we were young and played. I think that adults are different. Ooh, and I think that's okay. the problem. Okay. Yeah. I think the problem is... That Say that one more time. Hold on. I think Who's the, different? The adults. Mm, yeah, right, right, right. Wow. Yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> that is the difference. The, 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 one more know, time. One more time. The adults are very different. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my, when I'm at my friend's house and I say something I shouldn't have said at that age, you know, my, you know, and, you know, big Mike Mathis, the NBA official, and, and yeah. he slaps the hell out of me. Another guy. And my dad's all, he, and he's, he's like, big Mike should have slapped you. Hmm. You know, mm. I and mean, that's mm. just that we were raised in a different world. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't have said what you said mm -hmm. or been disrespectful, mm. you, you know, wh whatever. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and that's just how it, it now, 
um, you know, your dad's going to go sue, sue the, that guy. That's yeah. right. Right? Then we That's got right. a lawsuit yeah. on That's that. right. Yep. You know, yep. The teacher is never right anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's just, a, you know, that, that has changed. Yeah. Kids don't, they, they follow our lead. Yeah. Right. You know, they look up to us. And when it comes to coaching guys, I just tell them the truth. Look, mm -hmm. you're, you're not making, you know, Jaime Jaquez has made it. He's going to be all rookie in the NBA. Not because of what I, hey, I'm, I'm recruiting. Yeah. I developed him. No, no, no. Jaime Jaquez is a warrior. Right. Mm -hmm. right he is right. a soldier that can show up every day. And, the, and I tell him that to play in the NBA, you better be able to show up every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They play 82. Yes. And, and playoffs, and they, you know, can you show up every day without the assistant coach saying, "Come on now, pay attention, hustle." Nah, you can't do all that. You're out. I'm gonna draw you back to basketball uh, directly. Uh, NCAA tournament. There's talk about expanding it. Yeah. How do I've you, seen that. How do you feel about that idea? Uh, I, I'm. I understand. First of all, it will happen. Oh. Okay. Be, be, because at the end of the day, money talks oh, yeah. and everything else walks. Yeah. That's yeah. just my feeling. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think Spain. that there, and, and coaches, I'm not for it, but co there's coaches who say, well, there's a too low of a percentage of our teams don't make the NCAA yeah, yeah, tournament. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but look, look, there's too many Division I teams. 360, come on. That's a lot, yeah. You know, you're really, like, you can't compare, yeah. you know, some of those teams to UCLA or right. Kentucky or whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah. So let's just be honest. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, so there's really how many Re Division one teams that when they say in the next five years you can pay your players mm -hmm. You'll find out who's really division one. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah. that's common where we're, we're gonna be able to play our own players mm -hmm. And it will come from the school. There's so another I, you know another change that's already happened, which is Oof. We, we introduced you Thanks. as the two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year. <laughs> the, ain't hey. gonna, we ain't going to find three because there is no Pac-12. I need to say, uh, I, find, I need to find those awards. <laughs> those are um, collector's items. Oh, yeah. Pac-12. <laughs> but you're moving to the Big Ten. Yeah. How, how is that going to impact UCLA and the program? Well, from the school standpoint, um, you know, it's already a worldwide brand, university, you know, sure. wise and UCLA Medical and all that. But... Uh, for the branding opportunities of all our athletes, you're now doing you're in coast to coast. Mm. I mean, how many leagues are DC to New York to, yeah. to LA, yeah. Chicago? Yeah. I mean, we're literally the only league spanning coast to coast in major cities. So mm. that's opportunity. Now I'm gonna have to have a real comfortable travel pillow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously, yeah. you know, and the logistics of the Big Ten has to work out. So look, basketball and football are easy for the Big Ten to work out to travel. Yeah. It's the Olympic sports, yeah. mm. you know, that they, they don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah, work yeah. all that out. I mean, we look, we're flying on private planes and yeah. eating steak. So. Does, does recruiting, does it help you with recruiting because you have that, that bigger footprint? The era of what league you play in affecting recruiting is 10 years ago. Mm. Really? Yeah, that, that, there was a time I want to play in the Big East. I want to play, yeah. you know, I think once the Big East started breaking up, the East right. Coast, kid, you know, it was always kind of a thing. Yep. You know, um, more tradition now because Big East was the thing thing now. Now yeah. it's yeah. just now you have the NIL mm -hmm. and it's just it's just kind of all blended together, I, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, it just doesn't ever come up in the, in the recruiting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, now, now it's going to be. I, 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 oh, oh, I, got, I got one more before Cincinnati. we leave. Yes. Uh, when you got experts, you got to get all the details. Yes, you do. I like the place game. That was very oh, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. McCrona? Do you do you don't, take don't. Oh. offense in, in, in NCAA, you know, tournament? Yeah. Right? <laughs> do you take offense or you take defense? Mm. So I'm going to tell you, you uh, I'm going to give this to you. You go to break. It's KenPalm.com. Okay. Okay, there's only Ooh. two teams left with the top ten efficiency in offense and defense. I've seen that. I can, I can tell you right now. Connecticut and it, Arizona. Because it's, um, it's, um, in the last yeah. 20 years, 25 years of the winners, yeah. it's, uh, this is not a game. It's, uh. If you twenty top twenty five in defense and top forty in offense, yes. that combination if, for the last fifty some sixty years, it that works. winner is. Here's that. your so, problem: there's seven teams left. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. That's what that I'm trying to give you. Top twenty and defense and top twenty yeah. in both, yeah. but there's only two in the top ten. Right. One Arizona you, and UConn. Yep, well, my dog Shady yeah. does bet a lot. Some people's brackets is gonna be messed up. Yeah. Four number one seeds left in this. I know. <laughs> Great game. Who should be on upset alert out of the number one seeds? Well. If you look at recruiting, Duke's got uh, way better players than Houston. Mm. But if you watch the game... They don't have no dog in them, though. No. If you watch the game, it's hard to bet against Houston, yeah. right? Houston I mean, be really rocking. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. Houston got yeah. pit bulls. Yeah. Yeah. They got dogs, Jamal, bro. Yeah. Like, Jamal Shedd is not necessarily like right. that, yeah. though. Yeah. Houston yeah. always yeah. plays like Ooh, that. Yeah. that boy good. That boy good. He can put the helmet on. Yes, he can. He, he, 
He can There's certain players you, you can see, you can see it in them, though, right? In football, I think it's easier to see. Yo, you see, um, in basketball, when a guy that straight dominates, you can really see it. So, mm. Houston, yeah. dog. So. I, I would say um, North Carolina. That's my team. Is in trouble. Oh. <laughs> you spoke too soon. Against Arizona. That's my team. Arizona. Well, look, look, if you do, you, you, you know, if you yeah. do play a little bit for fun, North Carolina is facing down, if they play Arizona, yeah. this weekend in the Elite Eight. The game's in L.A. Mm. Arizona's higher than them in the efficiency. Arizona will be a one or two point yeah. favorite in that mm. game. Ooh. Um, Mick, you know, you made my day today, Mick. You don't even know it, coach. Even though, the two, even though they're the two seed. Mm. So, um, and it's, you know, Arizona's fans, will they'll be 10 to 12,000 oh, yeah. strong. Uh, in they LA. do travel. Oh, so yeah. that, that, that'll be the toughest, you know, I would say, you know, when the one seed's not going to be favored. Right. Yeah. right. If that game happens. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.